Hi guys, and welcome to episode two of the Typhoon Legacy Channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about the uh, structure of the Hawker Typhoon, some of its assemblies anyway, and how they were produced and get into a bit of the terminology that I'll be using so that we all have a better understanding of what the heck I'm talking about as the build progresses. Now for this specific episode, it covers the uh, wing structure of the Typhoon and the cockpit structure. If you're watching on YouTube, you're only going to see the wing structure, uh, but if you'd like to see the whole thing, please head over to our Typhoon Legacy channel at the address listed below and uh, subscribe. You'll get to get all of the content in full detail. So in the meantime, here we go with the wing structure. Take care, guys. The Hawker Hurricane had just started coming off of the production line, and Hawker had already set its sights on the next generation interceptor. The idea behind this new fighter was to have it capable of 400 miles an hour and house 12 303 machine guns in its wings. To do this, they were going to use two very unorthodox new engines, one being the Rolls-Royce Vulture and one being the Napier Sabre engine. So the first aircraft was the R-Type, the Rolls-Royce Vulture-powered aircraft, which eventually became the Hawker Tornado. And the second aircraft was the N-Type, or the Napier Sabre-powered aircraft, which eventually became the Hawker Typhoon. Now there's a lot of information and history on the Tornado, its development, modifications that were done to it, but ultimately it ended up losing out. And I believe it's primarily because Rolls-Royce needed to focus on the production of the Merlin engine and they didn't have the time to focus on the development of this new X-configuration 24-cylinder Rolls-Royce Vulture. An interesting thing to point out with the design of both of these aircraft and the Hawker Tempest uh, 2, 5 and 6 is that the development and the early design was a combination of Hawker's tried and proven Hawker Hurricane N-girder style uh, steel bolted tube structure and the new technology to them of uh, stress skin monocoque design. And it, it really bridges the gap between the Hurricane and the Hawker Sea Fury in the way that the cockpit of all of these fighters, the Tornado, the Typhoon, and all variants of the Tempest, was still a tube structure. It was still made of T-50 steel tube, and it still had bolted joints. Um, where it changes is they've got then an integrating structure that attaches to their first monocoque fuselage section, which was first mass produced with the Hawker Typhoon. After years of looking at the structure and the design of the Hawker Typhoon, it's really clear to me that they set out, performance aside, with two main goals in their design process. The first being ease of maintenance, and I, I believe they kept that um, the tube structure not just for the fact that it was tried and proven and that they are quite um, good at producing it, but the fact that it was maintainable, you could remove one tube from the structure and bolt a new one on, there's no cutting and welding and it could be done fairly quickly. It also allowed the Typhoon to have completely removable cowl panels from the cockpit forward to the nose cone. You could pull every one of those panels off and have immediate access to the engine and the systems and whatever you need to get into. So from a maintenance perspective, that was an excellent, excellent design. The second one is more of composite production. And by composite production, I mean taking multiple what you would normally see as one main assembly, breaking them into smaller chunks and having more groups of people produce smaller components to bring them together and have them then assembled into a larger assembly, larger assembly from there, and then on to the final assembly. And this allowed a very efficient use of personnel in the production. I'll start with the wing here, um, and the wing is a good example of the uh, design, the composite design that I was talking about before, whereas it's a pretty standard wing, it, uh, it bolts directly to the fuselage, which is different from the Hawker Hurricane that had uh, a joint at the dihedral of the wing. Um, but it's fairly standard in that it runs from root to the base of the wing tip and it has a forward and rear spar. The composite construction is where you look at the spar makeup and you can see that they've built the spars in a root section, a midsection, and an outboard section. And they did this both fore and aft spars. 
The root spar section is a very, very heavy end girder type construction. And it uses spar booms, upper and lower, uh, made from a double T extrusion. In between these, there's a Warren girder or a Warren truss system of channel section extrusions bolted with gusset plates and bolts. And it's a very, very heavy load bearing piece of structure. At the dihedral joint on the Typhoon, it switches to a, um, another double T extruded boom, upper and lower, but they go from the girder style to a double web style. It, it's different front and rear spars on the Typhoon. The front spar goes for this double section goes from the, uh, the dihedral joint to about midway between the gun bay. And the difference here is because there's a subspar just in behind that that runs from the, uh, the inside of the gun bay to the outside of the gun bay. And it creates what they call the torsion box on the Typhoon, a very, very heavy piece of structure that is designed to eliminate torsion in the wing. So at the point halfway through the gun bay, the for forward spar, double T-boom construction, changes. On the rear spar, it carries out all the way to the outside of the gun bay. And at, which, at these points is where you'll see it be reduced to a much lighter uh, single T-boom upper and lower and a single web. And this will run right out to the base of the wingtip. And the, the wingtip is designed and built separately as well, so it can be bolted on after the wing is complete. So it's a, it's a fairly basic construction, but it is very, very heavy. When you look at the wing cord-wise, you'll see that there's nose ribs, there's interspar ribs, and there's trailing edge ribs. But again, it's a very similar, or very normal construction technique from what we see today. If you look at the interspar ribs, there's six main, very heavy interspar ribs, and they carry the bulk of the loads. Once you get outboard of the gun bays, there's some lighter ribs as well, but the six main ones are the, the guys to talk about. These six ribs are all built of a web design, um, just like the spars are, with a extruded member for attachment to the skin. Again, very heavy ribs. Okay, so I don't normally bring people back here. This is our quarantine building, and it's where we keep all of the parts that we're not currently working on that uh, are, have not been verified as serviceable parts, which is a lot of them. <laughs> so, but uh, I, I bring you here so I can show you some of the wing that we're discussing and some of the, uh, the structure. So it's hard to see here, but if you look, this whole assembly is what I mentioned to be the torsion box, and it runs back to, um, actually, back up a little bit. This is the main spar dihedral point. You can see that there's big steel splice points in there, upper and lower, and this is the bottom of the wing here. You can see that um, this is the beginning or end, depending how you look at it, of the end girder structure. These are the channels that run in an end format between upper and lower spars inboard, which will be that way. So if you look at this, you talk about the thickness of the wing on the Typhoon, it's basically the width of a forearm at that point, and it still goes another six feet inboard, so it's a fairly hefty structure. So anyway, this is the uh, the main spar here, and this is that sub spar that I referred to, which runs the width of the gun bay. Uh, the two cannons here and down here. There's a big oval. They uh, go through the torsion box. Heavy structure. Uh, and when I talked about the uh, the main spar boom profiles, you can kind of see the remnants of one here, which would be the lower inward double T boom. So there's the two T legs, and there's the the web of the boom. So this is this one here is the aft spar, and it is the midsection spar. And again, see it's the double T boom. Ah, aha. Double T boom. We've got a web here, and uh, they have that upper and lower. It then transitions out this way, just after the gun bay, and it goes into a single T extrusion with a single web, like that guy and it uh, gets lighter from there. I can't really see, I'd have to light that up a little bit more. We'll go into greater detail on the wing as we get farther into it. But here is uh, a little bit more gun bay looking forwards. This down here being the bottom of the wing and uh, this being the uh, that sub spar again. So fairly, fairly substantial structure. Uh, I wouldn't hazard to guess what this thing weighs. It's very difficult for us to move in here. <laughs>
At the moment, most of the team is working on other areas, but we are doing a little bit of design work on the uh, root end and attachment points for the Hawker Typhoon wing. As you can see, we've got the bulk of one complete wing, and uh, that'll be used to uh, mirror new components for both port and starboard wings. In addition to this, we'll use the drawings that we have available to us, and we were very fortunate to have been able to do a complete wing scan on MN-235, the sole surviving typhoon, when it was on loan to Canada. All of this information will be combined, and it'll go uh, likely with some other components that we're still searching for to develop the full CAD model of the wing and full production ability here at Typhoon Legacy for brand new Hawker Typhoon wings. So there you go guys, uh, if you'd like to see the full version of that episode, please head over to the Typhoon Legacy channel and hit subscribe. If you'd like to uh, continue on with us on YouTube, we're going to have all sorts of great information and a lot of the action that's happening around the shop on here, absolutely free. Please like and subscribe this channel and share it with all your friends. I look forward to episode 3, we'll talk to you guys soon.